Welcome beginning art students. So a funny misconception about art is that it's somehow magic. I know that sounds kind of weird, but some people almost have that type of thinking when it comes to art. But in reality, art is really just many, many, many hours of practicing and learning the correct skills and techniques. So one of those that I want to talk to you about is using references. So some people believe that if you are an artist, you can just draw anything on the spot from your imagination and you don't need any assisting or references or any help, but in reality, that's just not really accurate. Even the very, very best artists typically use some sort of reference, some type of guide to make their artwork realistic and accurate. So before we draw anything in this class, what we're going to use is a reference, but not just one reference. Um, most, most of the time, many references. So references can be just photographs. They can be using things from real life. Since in this class, we're not really worried about copyright issues because we're not making artwork to sell or to publish. We're just doing it to practice, to get better, to learn better skills and techniques. So you could use maybe book covers or magazines or comic books or art books, anything like that. So we're just drawing to practice. So we're just gonna use images to get better. We're not trying to make money in this class or sell anything like that. So we're in aiming to improve. So in order to improve, we need to use references. Now for some people, the word reference might be a confusing word, but a reference is just pretty much anything that we can see, that we can copy, okay? That we can use to draw off of. So that's what a reference is. And that is. So that's why I say, you know, photographs typically work good. A lot of my students like to have a file on their phone or something on, the phone, on their phone where they just keep a bunch of photos so if they're out somewhere on a vacation or a trip and they see like a tree that has a special look to it, they take their phone out and they take that photo and they save that as a reference. Or if they're somewhere and they see like an interesting animal, they take their phone out and they take a picture of that and they want to maybe draw that later and they save it as a reference. So as being an artist, you know, artists are reference collectors in a way. The other day I was driving um, down the street and I saw all these head looking trees where there was a big fire and the way that trees were shaped, you know, I was just tempted to stop right there in the road and pull up my phone and take a picture. I didn't because I didn't want to cause an accident. But those are things to be looking for as an artist when you see something that looks interesting or something that you might want to study and draw to, if you have your phone, take it out, take a photo and save that as a reference or find them online or if you see an interesting uh, reference anywhere else in a book or a magazine or in a photograph, uh, maybe save that so you can use it in a part of your drawing later. Now references, you don't want to just use a reference poorly. You don't want to take someone else's artwork, their full creation, and use that as a reference because that's just straight up like copying and stealing someone else's artwork. So sometimes I have to talk to students about that where I'll say, hey, for our art theme for this assignment, it is to draw blank. And they go to Google, they type in whatever that is, and they pull up someone else's artwork and they just copy it exactly. You don't want to do that in this class. But in this class, what we can do is we can take a reference over here and a reference over there and a reference over here and a photograph I took yesterday and a photograph I took the day before and take them and put them all together, kind of being a collage artist of sorts to make our own unique artwork. And that's a, that's a fun way and a neat way to use references, especially for this beginning art class. So today's assignment, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna provide you a reference of a bulldog. Since most of my students are bulldogs, okay? We're gonna provide you with a reference of a bulldog. Now this reference is a very um, simplistic reference. And what I want you to practice is drawing from that reference, the one I'm going to provide for you. This one right here. Okay, now looking at this bulldog, you can see that it is a bunch of line work. There's no color, it's just very um, simplistic line work. So what you need to do here is draw this bulldog. Don't draw a bulldog out of your imagination. Don't draw what you think a bulldog should look like. Every single little line in this bulldog, you're gonna copy exactly. Don't think to yourself, oh, I'm drawing the bulldog's ear, or I'm drawing the bulldog's head, or drawing the bulldog's body. Think of it as a series of lines. Now I'm drawing this line, now I'm drawing this line, and now I'm drawing this line. When we think about it, 
as drawing a bulldog, that could become overwhelming to beginning art students. So I don't want to stress you out with that. Think of it as you are drawing a series of small lines instead of focusing on drawing a full bulldog. And that will alleviate a lot of stress of this first drawing assignment. So for this first assignment, the bulldog from reference assignments, is going to be very simply drawing in your sketchbook from the reference that I'm going to upload of a bulldog, the one you just saw. And you're going to draw that into your sketchbook. Now you can make it take up the whole entire page if you want to, um, or if you want to divide your paper in half and just have to take up half the page, I'm going to let you decide, but don't make it any smaller than half a page. Okay? No smaller than half a page. As you begin to sketch this bulldog, follow those same techniques that I talked to you about before. The sketching, instead of just drawing in really dark, deep lines, sketch out the bulldog. Get the line exactly the way you want it. Start with a very loose and relaxed hand. Remember what we talked about before, how we can hold the pencil. We can hold it up here by the tip. We can go back to um, the mid view, a part of the pencil, or we can go from the very, very back of the pencil. Or if you want to, you can do our fun little Harry Potter method where we kind of sketch like this, almost like it's a magical wand, okay? So keep it light, keep your initial sketch lines light. So this might be something where you want to begin with your mechanical pencil and then move on to your more dull wooden pencil. Or if you're using more of the professional drawing pencils, you might want to start with like a 2H or a 4H. And then once you have those lines sketched out, move on to your pencils that have a B in them for black, because that lead's going to be a lot softer and it's going to melt a little bit more into the paper. So that's our Bulldog from Reference Drawing Assignments, where we're going to be drawing from the reference that I'm uploading for you, the one that I just showed in this video. If you want to, well, you can just go back to the video where I show the Bulldog, screenshot that, and use that as a reference as well if you're watching this on your cell phone, or you can download the reference photo as well. So that's going to be your drawing from your Bulldog drawing from reference assignments. Take your time on it. It's going to take some time. Good art takes a good amount of time, so be patient, okay? Draw one little line at a time, one little line at a time. Don't just quickly go through it, it's just one little line at a time. Back off, breathe. If you need to take a sip of water, you know, if you need some tea or coffee, relax. Get a little bit more energy, go back and draw a little bit more, okay? This is something that should take a good amount of time. It's not anything you're gonna sketch out in five, 10, 15 minutes, okay? So, that's our assignment. I'll catch you guys next time.